If you're a returning viewer, you might be thinking, whoa, deja vu. It's true that both this pen and ink have already been featured on this channel, but not in my pen and ink logbook, which is where I demonstrate these things with writing and drawing samples, along with a washi swatch. So that's what we're doing today with the Jinhao 100 Classic Fountain Pen and Airband's Lidate ink. The paper is in a Japanese-made Apica CD notebook. Can we give a shout-out to May? It's a big month for Star Wars fans. With the May the 4th be with you, Star Wars Day. And it's Mental Health Awareness Month. I'm not correlating. I'm just saying... But I'm not here to talk about how over Star Wars I've been since uh, the 1990s. I'm here to complain about their audacity in appropriating my birthday for their fandom. Wait, no, I got confused. That's not why I'm here. Maybe this is a sign that I should stop counting the years... I mean, I already have my agecalculator.com bookmarked because I can no longer keep the math straight on my own. For the writing sample, I used the Food Lover's Companion entry for Butterscotch. This is where you'd expect me to go off on a tangent about that delicious confection and its similarities to caramel and toffee. Maybe even dredge up some long-ago childhood memory that explains why it's not one of my favorite flavors. But I'm so enamored with this ink that I'm having a hard time thinking beyond... Oh, pretty. Sure, it might look a bit meh in the writing sample, but when it's swatched, you'll see the character come out in what I think of as warm, buttery goodness. The pen is a delight. I enjoyed using it in the first impressions video, but I don't think I appreciated it enough at the time. Yeah, technically this is producer Mike's pen. Look, if he's going to leave his pen case in my studio, then I have no qualms about occasionally borrowing its contents. Did I have avaricious eyes and greedy grasping hands at the time? I don't think so, but it's possible. It goes without saying that I did not practice drawing butterscotch candies. That's right. I went in cold, because sometimes you've got to live life on the edge. It's all part of that wild and crazy artist lifestyle. And nothing screams reckless, quite like wah-doing candy doodles. Butterscotch makes me think of autumnal things. It's only May, and my head is filled with fall leaves and pumpkin fluff. It makes sense. It is halfway to Halloween, after all. If only real life were more like Animal Crossing, I could skip summer altogether and move to the good stuff, like caramel apple cider, jack-o'-lanterns, and spooky movie marathons. Really, I enjoy them all year round. They just mean more in the fall. Kinda like how that gingerbread chocolate bar we had the other day was fine and dandy, but it lacked the seasonal magic. Look, I don't hate butterscotch. I just prefer caramel and toffee. Someone could probably explain the finer points of what differentiates these flavors. Unfortunately, that's not me. The point is, 
If you wave an opened bag of butterscotch hard candies under my nose, there won't be any shuddering and gagging. Nope, I'm gonna sneak a few as soon as your back is turned. Your licorice, however, is safe from me. The other morning, I had a mishap while preparing producer mics to go coffee. I think most people have to have coffee a certain way, right? Black, sweet, milky, or whatnot. Producer Mike likes his liquid candy bar style. So I did the usual. Cocoa mix, heavy cream, three different flavors of liquid creamer, and a couple of dashes of salt. And just as I was placing the lid on the 32-ounce insulated tumbler, I fumbled and knocked it over, spilling hot ambrosia all over the kitchen counter, where it seeped under trivets and appliances and cascaded down the front of the dishwasher. And I didn't find this out until later. It actually oozed inside the cabinet beneath the sink as well. Not to mention the floor was covered with it. It looked a bit like that swatch, actually. This happened about ten minutes before he needed to be out the door. So, lickety-split, I cleaned up as best I could and managed to replicate the concoction in time. I don't know if it's just in my head, but I can smell the sticky sweetness and dairy products settling in those kitchen cracks and crevices. But the important thing was he made it to the quarry in time. Yabba dabba do. Do people these days go in for butterscotch? It just strikes me as an old-fashioned flavor. Like something from the 1890s, with a name like Botherington's Boiled Butterscotch, that's guaranteed to cure an array of ailments, including headaches and halitosis, packaged in a decorative tin with lace ribbon around it. Too fancy? Hey, we're talking about the 1890s here when the competition was licorice all sorts. That makes me think of a video I once saw where a guy pranked his friend by taking him to a bar where all the patrons were dressed in 1880s garb. That means there were lots of suspenders, bowler hats, and handlebar stashes. I couldn't find it on YouTube, so my apologies, but I remember it being somewhat entertaining. Do I have any fountain pen regrets? Yes. All those years I could have used fountain pens but didn't. Wasted. Why didn't anyone tell me about these things? You could have spared me a lot of Lick chagrin and paper mate grief. The problem with just getting into fountain pens now is that it can be hard to share the excitement. You can't go, hey girlfriend, check this out. It's called a fountain pen and it will blow your mind. I mean, it's a pen. They've been around for many decades. Then again, maybe I'm just selling it all wrong. Instead of, it will blow your mind, I should go with, it will mildly delight you and generally enhance your handwriting experience. I'm happy to share this inky session with you. I didn't have a whole lot to say about either the pen or the ink, but like I said, they were covered in previous videos. I'll even put handy links in the description for you. Until next time, keep in mind that butterscotch isn't limited to hard candies. So embrace the flavor. Or just try butterscotch pudding. Or blondies. Or dessert topping. You've got options. 
and stay artsy, my friends. <laughs>